Since 2016, the United States has passed thousands of sanctions against China. U.S. government officials have targeted over 70 of China's most advanced tech companies, blocked entire areas like the autonomous region of Xinjiang from exporting goods to the U.S., and blocked hundreds of Chinese government officials from traveling to or even interacting with U.S. companies. All of these measures were passed with one simple goal in mind, stop the rise of China. U.S. sanctions against China should have crippled the Chinese economy. It should have stopped China's military from expanding. It should have stopped China's ability to advance technologically. If everything went according to plan, the United States should have easily had an enormous technological advantage over China. But remarkably, none of this came to pass. For example, one of America's stated goals with these sanctions was to stop China's ability to develop artificial intelligence. The US government believed that if China was able to develop AI, it could give the Chinese military an unfair advantage in future warfare. But if you look at this graph, it ranks the top companies in the world who have developed the most generative AI patents. And Chinese companies dominate 12 of the top 20 positions. There is only one American company ranked in the top five, and that's IBM, which owns 601 patents respectively. But Chinese companies represent the other four positions in the top five, and together, these companies combine for over 5,400 AI patents alone. Whether you like it or not, China and the US are both technology powerhouses. And despite US politicians' best efforts to stop China's rise, the Chinese have found a way to not only survive, but thrive. China's phenomenal turnaround was highlighted in a recent Wall Street Journal article entitled, The US Wanted to Knock Down Huawei, It's Only Getting Stronger. And inside this article, it reveals an incredible three-step strategy that China used to not only survive survive the harshest of America's sanctions, but completely revitalize its tech industry and set the country up for future success. Let's break down each of these three strategies in today's video and reveal the real reason why American sanctions on China failed. There is no greater case study of China's three-point strategy than studying the rise, fall, and dramatic comeback of Huawei, China's most prolific tech company. Huawei's story is incredible and illustrates the hard work and determination of the Chinese people to overcome any obstacle. Huawei was founded by a Chinese entrepreneur, Ren Jiangfei, who was a former Chinese army soldier who started importing foreign telecom equipment into China. Ren, who was an engineer by training, started making his own equipment and launched Huawei in 1987 from his studio apartment in Shenzhen. Over the next three decades, Huawei would become one of the world's most important telecom manufacturers. By 2010, 80% of the world's top 50 telecom companies worked with Huawei, with Huawei selling its products to over 170 countries around the globe. It seemed like nothing could stop Huawei, but the US government decided to give it their best shot. On December 1st, 2018, Meng Wanzhou, the daughter of the Huawei founder, was arrested by the U.S. government while transferring planes at the Vancouver International Airport in Canada. She was charged with violating U.S. sanctions by selling equipment to Iran and was held under house arrest for three years in Canada. During this time, the U.S. government launched a full-force attack on Huawei, and overnight, the U.S. government passed sanctions forbidding any U.S. company to work with Huawei, and the U.S. government even convinced most of Europe to follow America's lead in stop working with Huawei. To be honest, the US sanctions were incredibly effective. Huawei was forced to sell its main smartphone brand because it couldn't access advanced microchips. By 2021, revenues declined by more than 30%. By 2022, net profits collapsed by 70%. Ren Jiangfei, the Huawei founder who grew up admiring the United States, now realized his company was fighting for its life. He issued a memo to Huawei employees stating, in the past, we chased the ideal of globalization, determined to serve mankind. What are our goals now? It's to survive. We will make money wherever we can. This statement marked a turning point for Huawei. And here was the first strategy on how China is surviving US sanctions. Instead of exporting around the world, China has shifted to domestic consumption. Once again, Huawei is an excellent case study to examine. After the US government sanctioned the company and destroyed its revenue, Huawei began developing entire new industries. It helped build the world's most advanced shipping port in Tianjin. It started using its 5G network to advance the coal mining industry in China and even expanded to the booming EV industry, something even Apple has not done yet. And as this graph illustrates, 
Within five years, Huawei was able to shift its revenue sources dramatically. Today, nearly 70% of Huawei's revenues come directly from mainland China, as the company has expanded its reach into a multitude of new industries. And here is where the second strategy for China comes into play, because Huawei used these American sanctions as fuel and portrayed itself as a national champion that prioritizes serving the needs of China. As you can imagine, this branding would go on to become very popular within China, helping Huawei expand and become even more popular amongst Chinese nationals. After three years of house arrest, the US government eventually would go on to drop all charges against Meng Wanzhou. Overnight, the founder's daughter was sent on a plane back to China, and when she emerged on the Chinese runway in September 2021, she expressed her gratitude and said something that immediately solidified Huawei's deep connection to the Chinese people and country. Over the last three years, I've come to understand this better. An individual's fate, a corporation's fate, and the country's fate are all intertwined. Our motherland is our strongest backing. Meng was seen as a national hero in China, someone who stood up against the US government for three years, eventually winning her freedom. After Meng's return to China, Huawei continued its impressive turnaround. Huawei's sales last year were over $100 billion, twice that of American tech firm Oracle. Huawei is just half the size of Samsung, Korea's leading tech company, but incredibly, Huawei now outspends it on research and development. Huawei once again started producing advanced smartphones, and after trailing Apple sales by double digits in early 2020, the company's smartphone sales have made a resounding comeback. As US companies like Microsoft are reducing their presence in China, once again because of these sanctions, Huawei is now hiring all the former Microsoft engineers to join its expanding workforce instead. Finally, a new report from the Wall Street Journal dropped this week revealing Huawei is now set to release a new AI chip that will challenge NVIDIA's most powerful AI microchip. Chinese companies like ByteDance, Baidu and China Mobile are already in discussions to buy the chip, and what we are witnessing here is Chinese companies coming closer to support each other and find ways to collaborate and overcome these US sanctions. In a public speech last year, Ren Jiangfei, the Huawei founder, recalled that one of his executives stated, America doesn't understand that with this blow, they are turning the biggest supporter of the US into his largest detractor. It's a powerful quote and shows what a missed opportunity the United States made with China. The two nations have been trading partners for over 50 years, and the relationship has produced incredible results for both nations. But the old adage of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger seems to apply perfectly in this situation for both Huawei and China, who have overcome seemingly every challenge the US government has thrown their way. But now it's time to reveal China's third and final strategy to overcome US sanctions, and that is government support to any industry or company deemed crucial to the future development of China. This case study of Huawei is once again a prime example. Over the years, the Chinese government has handed out subsidies, tax credits, and government contracts to rally support behind Huawei. Quite simply, because the future of China's development depends on Chinese companies not just surviving, but pushing the limits of innovation. Another powerful case study to examine is the incredible rise of the Chinese EV industry. For most of this century, foreign brands have dominated China's car market. Every year, they sold millions of cars and earned billions of dollars in profits. Chinese consumers love Buick, Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, and Toyota, and were happy to pay cash for the prestige of owning a brand that wasn't Chinese. Chinese. One General Motors executive was quoted as saying, China is our forever profit machine. We can bank on an easy $2 billion dividend every year. But now, that golden era is officially over. Sales and profits for foreign auto brands are vanishing, while auto executives in the US, Germany, and Japan are stunned by the speed and intensity of these changes. But what happened in the auto industry? was a calculated move from the Chinese government, who at the turn of the century set out to become the top electric vehicle producer in the entire world. And without question, the Chinese government has helped achieve this goal. Just last month, for the first time in history, more than half of the passenger vehicles sold in China were new energy vehicles, reaching 879,000 units, a year-on-year -year increase of 37%. This marks the first time new energy vehicles have surpassed fuel vehicles in monthly sales in China and shows how mainstream EV vehicles have become and that fuel cars are now the minority in China. Once again, the Chinese EV industry was fueled directly by the Chinese government, who gave out subsidies and tax credits to both Chinese and foreign companies. I mean, why else would Elon Musk build his gigafactory in China? But before anyone claims this strategy is unfair, 
It's important to note that this is simply a best practice used by nations around the world, including the United States. When Joe Biden passed the CHIPS Act in August 2022, the US government pledged over $50 billion to the microchip industry in America, helping companies like Intel, Micron, and Texas Instruments. The CHIPS Act even helped persuade Taiwan's TSMC, the largest and most important microchip producer in the world, to invest billions of dollars in building a new factory in Arizona. But moving forward, we will see increased support from both the Chinese and U.S. governments as sanctions, trade wars, and uncertainty mark the future of U.S.-China relations for the time being. But as always, you can count on this channel to help you stay informed. And before we go today, I want to briefly circle back to one of our sponsors of the channel who recently had some exciting news on the stock market. Now, earlier this week, I told you about a company I'm very excited to partner with, and that is American Aries, which trades under the symbol AAIRF and is today's video sponsor. The team at American Aries have created a revolutionary resonator chip that helps protect you from the harmful electromagnetic radiation coming from many of the electronics that we use every day. And this product is actually pretty incredible. Their signature product is called LifeTune, and it fits directly on the back of your electronic devices to help protect you from EMF radiation. I'm actually using the LifeTune product right now on the back of my cell phone because as you can imagine, as a content creator, I'm spending a lot of time with this device. Now, the company's stock has been on a bit of a roller coaster the past few months, but it has been really undervalued and earlier this week received a nice bump and at the time of this recording, is up over 56% the past five days. Company sales have quadrupled from just 2.6 million in 2021 to over 10 million for 2023. And together, the company has sold over 220,000 units into 93 different countries. The company just signed a new deal to be an official sponsor with UFC. And if you're interested in learning more about American Aries and this incredible tech, I'm going to link the website where you can see all the products they offer and how the company is driving online sales through this platform. Platform. Next, I'm going to include a link to the website and investor presentation for you to learn more about the company. And finally, I'm going to share a link to an amazing 34 minute interview with American Aries CEO Josh Bruni. I've watched this entire presentation, and this guy is exceptionally smart and has an incredible track record in building and marketing businesses. But as always, I want to remind you to do your own research and make your own decisions before making any investments. And as always, I want to thank you for spending time with me here today on YouTube. Check the video description for all those links and information and drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about these three strategies from China on how they survived U.S. sanctions. As always, thank you for your incredible support and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.